It is a beautiful, bright, and freezing cold morning in Eugene, Oregon. And what better way to start your weekend off than with some wonderful varsity Overwatch gameplay? I'm Fun Phoenix. I'm joined by Aiden over there, and we're gonna we got some round three and four of the what is it Overwatch Collegiate Spring Championship? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. We got uh of, of course the UO Green, the varsity team up here playing up against Saint Clair. I believe is the round round three opponent. Yes. We're gonna be starting off with Antarctic Peninsula, the newest map in Overwatch. Uh, obviously the new control map um it's interesting to see how these teams are gonna uh, deal with this because with a new map obviously it takes a while to kind of figure out what the best team comp is there's obviously new strategies that are, are always coming in it's not like one of these maps like like a uh, uh, nimbani or or uh, uh you know um uh, any of the old maps that like people can figure out the strategies take time so there's always something new happening on antarctic peninsula which i'm always excited about yeah, you love to sort of see what the teams like to do on these new, unfamiliar places, right? And especially on this this control point, it's like really weird because it's so boxed in and enclosed. Yeah. And we sort of see that as Crime is going to lock in the Symmetra here, um, which sort of maybe speaks to their wanting to fight sort of up close in that enclosed area. Yeah, we're also seeing Putter on the May, uh, which is uh, going to be good in those tight spots as well. Um, seeing two different kind of setups here. Uh, as St. Clair going with the Wrecking Ball pick. Wrecking Ball, extremely annoying, able to split up the teams, and especially with a Reinhardt, that might be a difficult situation for Oregon to deal with. Yep, as the matchup is going to be into the Rhine. The Maywall not really going to help squeak out, though. They're just going to roll to safety. Oh, nice shot from Potter there on Emran. Going to be the first elimination, and that should give you, Oregon, the first shot at this point. Great move by Putter, also isolating Red X away from their team. Uh, really good defensive uh, strategies from Oregon coming off the bat, but Flatline's going to go down, and that's that Wrecking Ball able to get around, go to the back line, and just annoy annoy someone like a Lucio. Yep, and the first pick, will, the first cap will go to the Ducks, who now have that point taken away. His putter going to drop a little bit low, but should still be a okay. Oh, actually taken down by Arjunk now, stuck Red X. Finds Magician, so now it's a 3v2, I believe. And with that, the Ducks forced to retreat now, give up the cap. Squeak going to continue to chase their crime, a nice takedown on Flatline. And with that, it's going to be a clean sweep from St. Clair, and they're going to grab the point back. Yeah, a great, great move by St. Clair. You know, sometimes uh, uh, taking the point first is not always the best strategy. They took their shots. They, they have a really good uh, lineup for, for splitting the team up. And when you got that Reinhardt able to move the supports away from him, is going to take away a lot of that healing that he uh, absorbs with so much damage. So um, really smart move as we're going to see Crime trying to get a quick pick in the back line. Got the pulse bomb ready. Can they find it on? It'd be hard to get it on Putter, so it's going to have to be one of the other DPS. Oh, Putter just find a clean headshot on Crime there. No pulse bomb necessary. And with two from May, it's going to be a good clean sweep. Now the Ducks running it over. Putter finds a third. And with the help of Pukamuku, a, a nice and easy team kills. The Ducks take it back. Great move by Putter. I mean, Putter is so good with the shots as well. But also, the, the May wall, uh, spatial awareness. Putter, Putter is so incredible at that, that game sense that not everyone has. Yeah, but now we see the ultimate start to come up. Hydro Magician Putter, they've got a lot of damage to work with. And there's the Spirit Rush, the High Noon as well. A big knockup from Squeak. There goes Mines, dropped onto the point. Pukamuku going to find one Magician as well. Squeak gets one back with the Mine. And it's going to be stuck now. Squeak, so much HP to work with. And there's going to cause mayhem in the back line. Not a lot of damage, though. Oh, and it will be a takedown on Magician. So Putter and Flatline now are just going to try and deal with this ball. As that's the only one remaining in St. Clair. Not going to be able to retake that. Yeah, something interesting. The Squeak dropped the Mines right on top of uh, a good amount of people. But... Uh, really smart move by I Troll to throw down the immortality field, uh, able to save basically the whole team uh, against those mines. Which now with the the new buff, they they only take one second to deploy, and they can be so deadly so fast. Um, so really smart move by I Troll there. A window shatter. Window gonna be the counter to the high noon. The oh, May wall, so May good. Wall. Oh my god. Emran's still actually gonna be able to find I Troll though. So that's gonna be one support down for UO, and they're gonna force to give up the point. Putter though has the snowstorm available. Will they use Blizzard? Looks like they're not, and they're just going to walk away, fight for their life. But, of course, they are they are doomed to this situation. Kind of staggering themselves a little bit. Uh, but they do get a pulse bomb at the end there. 
Yeah, it, interesting from, from UO, you know, one of those things that I noticed is them trying to isolate Itrol from Pew Pew. Lucio, obviously great with speed boost, works really well with Reinhardt, but can't heal as much, and, and a lot of pros players don't really use the healing as much as they use this. So once your main healer is isolated, Lucio can't do a lot of healing for your team, so really smart move by St. Clair here, trying to isolate them. And we are going to see the mines are back, so that might go into play in this next fight. Mines are available, going to get dropped on point again. Pukamuku finds a nice charge on Emrin, though, and there's a Shatter. Actually going to be able to find the ball, but does get cleansed. All the mines, though, taken down with that Shatter, so that's going to be basically the entire ball ultimate removed. Now on point, just going to try and swing their hammer away, but the ball is still up squeak, just causing mayhem. The Maywall, a bit of a team anti-synergy there. High Noon up for Magician, and with the point back to UO, they're just going to try and finish it off right here. Force the TP out. Magician finds another one on Arjuk. The stuck onto that Tracer forces them to retreat. 97%. They're going to be forced to touch on this Tracer, but they don't have the HP available, really. A hack. Going to be good enough. Putter the headshot on Emrin, though. The cleanup. Lucio going to try and get all the way back on point, but Red X just can't get there in time. And Ducks take map one. Or, sorry, take the first point. Yeah, really, really strong showing from both sides. You know, really down to the wire at the end there. But, um... University of Oregon, I think, uh, had the advantage with their ultimate usage. I mean, uh, when the mines came up, immediately you saw Flatline with the bead. Um, so I think uh, the utilization of ultimates really went to uni uh, University of Oregon on that round. And how do, how do you think the ball went? Do you think we're going to see the ball again? Because it looks like Squeak is maybe uh, swapping it up. Yeah, you know, it, it worked a little bit uh, in certain fights, but I think overall it, it was really hard when you don't have your tank in the front line and, and when University of Oregon has such a strong unit push, especially with the May, uh, Wrecking Ball can't do as much damage as he'd like. So we are going to see Squeak be moving to Reinhardt here for round two. And it may be, you know, a brand new map, but we're seeing the exact same five heroes on both sides. So they figure something out. Yeah, absolutely. We saw a little bit of a Sombra at the end here. Sombra is getting some uh, niche use, uh, but really not being used to uh, her full potential. Great wall there uh, from Emerin uh, to stop the charge from Pukamuku as they're just going to try and push University of Oregon back the corner through the, the hallway. It's just W key central up here for St. Clair. Oh, but Putter with a nice ball on to Squeak. They're going to get caught out and isolated. Can't actually find the takedown. Putter got stuck. So two picks over three for St. Clair. And with that, they're just going to chase these supports away. And a clean five for zero is St. Clair. Gonna grab this first cap. Yeah, uh, it was a really smart uh, wall for Putter, and and but Emerin really also trapped Putter in with the Reinhardt at the same time with another wall. So these May walls coming out, it might be just a baiting to see who uses theirs first because they can really cancel each other out in so many situations. Look at Squeak, already 85 to Shatter here, so make that 90. They're basically gonna have Shatter for the second fight. Yeah, they're gonna have three ultimates for this fight. They got Shatter, they got Blizzard, and they have the window, so uh, watch out for that. As we're going to see Eitrel up with the... Oh. Window countered by the Blizzard. Is Emrin, sorry, just going to be in the back line. The enemy wi window is going to come out as well. And so neither team going to get taken down immediately as the Ducks just going to continue to try and get onto this high point. Magician wins the duel against Crime. The, the lamp gets taken down, and now it's Magician free firing from the top of the point. The Rhine Shatter going to come out, but Squeak is left alone with not a lot of teammates to work with. The beat will be able to keep him alive now, and now it's... The putter who has Blizzard up, and Pukamuku going to try and fight through the enemy May. And swinging away, the, the Shatter is available, dropping pretty low, but they're going to be able to hang on to it. Ducks still haven't been able to find a clean win in this fight, and they're actually forced out of the point, forced to, forced to back up. And with that Maywall, oh. trades with the Shatter at the end. Unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know what that Shatter was about. It might have just been a, a, a fear, a panic Shatter, like... Uh, that that fight was clearly lost as Pukamuka was stuck in front of a wall. So, really confused what that shatter uh, choice was. But, yeah, really strong defense here from St. Clair's. We're going to see the uh, Deadeye coming up in, in a wall to block off. But, um, you know, Deadeye, less of a, more of a damage in, and way more of a zoning or reload ultimate at this point. So we're going to see beat from Oregon and the window as they're trying to push in. But St. Clair holding on as... They got a cap here, 98%. Somebody's got to get on point, and who, I guess the Ducks just yeah. decided they weren't interested in that, as they're going to give uh, point number two to St. Clair in a rather uncontested fashion. Yeah, those really, I, I was 
very concerned at what Oregon's strategy was there at the end. Uh, seemed maybe like a communication issue they weren't aware because they were diving on the Reinhardt when the point was about to expire. So uh, I think for Oregon, really needs to get it back together for this last uh, point of this map. Yeah, and it did seem like St. Clair at the beginning there, they were able to just sort of run oh, onto please, the high ground faster. Please stay on that Bastion, Putter. Please, <laughs> I want to see the Bastion. Bastion really good against Reinhardt, able to mow down that shield really fast. Um, and the Maywall as well. And uh, that Emmerin has been giving them a lot of, sh of, of trouble with that May. So we might see Putter stick with the Bastion here to kind of take down all the walls and shields. Uh, that St. Clair is running right now. Uh, of course, you can't wall off the high noon nor the window now, but hopefully Putter is just going to plan on doing so much damage, it won't even matter. There comes the early wall, and St. Clair have a bit more space to work with in the beginning here. Will this Bastion pick work out? Putter dishing out a bunch of damage. Lamp forced out by both teams, and Pukumuku going to take down an enemy Lamp first as they're going to be able to stay alive. Both the tanks, about half HP. Is St. Clair going to drop now to the point? And the Ducks soon to follow here. Pukamuku down, swinging his hammer, just trying to do what he can. Neither team has lost a member, but there goes the tank for the Ducks as Squeak finds the kill on the enemy Reinhardt. And with the pick from Emron onto Putter, it's going to be the Ducks forced off this first point. And St. Clair, initial cap goes to them again. Yeah, I mean, and they also still have the ultimate advantage right here. So uh, St. Clair really taking advantage of the strong defense. They're going to take the high ground. Um, so University of Oregon gonna have to try and go through them. That Maywall is giving them a lot of trouble um, And St. Clair just knowing when to take their shots and and they're really just having fun on this map And this map looks well suited for what St. Clair likes to be doing which currently appears to be Cassidy alongside Maywall We're gonna Hunter. see both uh, both windows come up and I troll oh, oh big shatter Huge shatter, but looks like Oregon trying to take advantage. Emmerin going down from Putter as they're just trying to find Red X, who's trying to stay alive, but University of Oregon going to cap this point. Yeah, the Ducks actually cap it, and they still have not only their shatter, but their Bastion ultimate available. So, uh, wow, I, I'm really surprised the St. Clair actually lost that after it looked like they had like a four-man shatter. Yeah, really strong shatter, but also great, great job from iTroll trying to keep them alive. Um, as well as flatline, you gotta you gotta give the support their props. As we're gonna there see goes the, the high noon. Out. Not gonna find anyone. B drop now used by Red X. Emmerin gonna find Putter. This Bastion pick dying really soon. Looking not too great. The and there's shatter. a nice shatter. Is it gonna be enough though? Oh, and now walled off is Pukamuku. As the rest of the ducks are forced back, they got 30%. But looks like that's gonna be all. And with the speed from flatline. Remaining supports will be able to get out safely, but yeah, forced to give up point. Unfortunately, I troll couldn't couldn't stay in there, being walled off to to heal Pukamuku after the big shatter, and and having the the uh, immortality lamp up from our junk, really just hard for. I know Pukamuku is not happy right now. Emrin does have the blizzard here for this next fight. The Ducks now going to try a different approach. Going on the low ground, just going to go straight on the point. Drops the Blizzard. Emmerin on the, the entire team. Too. A big wall off. Putter's taken down really early and with the freeze on Pukamuku. Now taken down with the charge. It's going to be nothing doing for the Ducks here who almost got a cap but couldn't quite make it in time. Flatline maybe trying to fight crime but unable to make anything happen. Yeah, really, really smart beat drop from Flatline. As soon as they heard that Blizzard voice line, they were immediately dropping the beat. But... But St. Flat Clair line. just able to take advantage. Flatline's just trying to contest this point, save as much time to stall as possible. But we're going to see the, sh the shatter on Flatline as Oregon going to lose this first map yeah. to St. Clair. Point one over to the side of St. Clair. And with that, of course, this is best of three in the whatever round robin, 10 round Swiss, whatever. I don't know exactly what you want to call it. Yeah. Um, but hey, play the game. At least Putter got that. So even though they didn't get the map, they got to play the game. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. It was such a back and forth uh, first round. And as soon as uh, St. Clair switched to the Reinhardt and switched up their strategies, it was really an easy steamroll for them in these last two uh, rounds for the first map. I mean, uh, what are you thinking for what Oregon needs to do to, to hopefully bring this back and win the next two rounds? Well, uh, I know you were really excited for the Bastion, yeah. so I hate to say this, but it didn't look great. It was not. It was not it, a good. It was not a good. Look. <laughs> and I, I thought the the May actually was working pretty well, so I was a little surprised they swapped off of it. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure what they can do differently. It, it sort of felt like St. Clair was able to get on to the point faster, but I'm not really sure why that is since both teams had the, the same five heroes for the most part. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Bastion switch is one of those high-risk, high-reward kind of situations. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for Putter, who, uh, you know, I, Putter really loves to, to play that Tracer role. And so uh, with this new metagame, with so many DPS being viable, uh, Putter and Magician really have the work cut out for them trying to figure out which characters to play. And I think another thing is Magician just trying to hit those headshots with, with Cassidy, you know, getting some shots in, but really missing those those headshots, which uh, Crime was not having a problem with. Yeah, exactly. I definitely agree with you. And, of course, uh, in the chat here, I know you guys can't see it, but Putter is, of course, letting us know that uh, that was, of course, only their second time playing May ever. <laughs> so uh, in case you wondered what that looked like, that was that was, that was was game two on May. Yeah, I mean, that uh, impressive showing for game two. But uh, one of those things where, yeah, uh, Putter may not be as, as, as versatile uh, on the new uh, metagame for certain maps. And so when you're forced to play a character you're not as comfortable with, and you're going up against a mirror match with someone who is way more comfortable with, that's not going to go well for you. But at that point, you that's why I understand the Bastion switch more, is trying to find uh, a unique counter to someone maybe you know more that will hopefully win. And sometimes it works out, and in this case, it didn't. It didn't, right, exactly. I definitely agree. And map number two, we are going to be heading to King's Row. So, you know, there's three guarantees in life. Life, sorry, death, taxes, and King's Row, of course. King's Row, one of my favorite maps of all time. Uh, I don't know why. I just love it. I have so much nostalgia for it. Um, and it's got a banger of a theme. I would say that. It's it's a good map. Good solid map. A lot of great plays in this one. Absolutely. It's it's. I feel like it's up there with like Eichenwald. It's one of those like historic maps for for great showings. Um, and it allows so many different ways to play. You know, you can start off the spawn with the Widowmaker Peak. Uh, you can play high grounds. And, and we are going to play some Widowmaker at the start with Magician, but. Uh, we're seeing the Reinhardt stay the same, and the only swap is Ember and also Junkrat. Magician on the Widowmaker, other trying to figure out who they're going to play at first. But um, Ember and you know, uh, with the May last time with the Junkrat here, it looks like they're comfortable with those kind of spacing heroes. Um, so interesting to see what matchup we see. And I don't mean this as an attack on Emran, but I will say May and Junkrat are the characters I play when I play DPS because I can't aim for shit. Yeah. So no, no, no hit to Emran, of course, uh, but that's, I'll, I'll just say that. Yeah. Back is St. Clair going to hold on that first push? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure how to do this strategy. I'm trying to kind of get them shots in. They, they, get the, they get St. Clair low, but adding that extra charge. Magician and Butterfly. Oh, big wall. All the backline is gone, and the lamp is forced out. But as the lamp gets taken out, Duke Mook finds Squeak as well. So with the tank. Gone and the ducks still have theirs up. It's going to be the first point. Nice in favor of the ducks. A great charge. Crime's going to have to uh, reset Off the back of a great wall there from Magician. We really just opened up that entire point by isolating the all on their own. There we go. Now, 
gonna see what they might be able to do as St. Clair has post up on this high ground to see what they're able to make. A high green grind gets in space. Doesn't really make much though. Forces St. Clair back as the Ducks now reclaim the cart. Sweet shatter available here. Another nice fall. Window forced out as well. That the Ducks can wait that one out. Emerin gonna find part of the trade for those junk rats as a magician is still alive. Able to find one headshot but can't quite take it down as Arja kills the ducks gotta take here. Force back after switching the payload a few more meters. Yeah, I mean really with old pressure, it's a game of chess. You see the high noon, you see the blizzard, counter by the beat, counter by the shatter, the red tire. Aggressive charge. 
Also able to flame strike under some rift tires. Magician though, turn the tides back. A nice pair of kills, Emerson and Sweet down. It's just gonna be Prime holding down the damage department now. St. Clair works back a little bit, so look at better spawns. Well, gotta get window back up though. But there it is, position also 90% to high noon. He's gonna be the only available to work with. The window comes out. Five seconds remaining on the clock. What's gonna dig up the ducks do with this overtime push? They're almost there, but Ember gonna find a nice pick on the position there at the start. And Crime is able to take a bunch of space. The window can find a ton of value now. And there's a nice scatter from Sneak, and it's gonna be with that. The ducks gonna be down two and Ember in a cleanup. But are gonna try and find what they can. They get a kill on the Redex. And Crime with the overclock, it's going to be all that you wrote for the Ducks to get two points and 61 meters. Yeah, you know, I was going to get the last Cybernetic and always, but you know, the Ducks made it pretty far, and they were starting to get a little bit on that second point, but able to get as much distance, so um, a strong defense is really what they need right now. And um, yeah, a, a good showing for both teams, but, but really strong on the defensive end for St. Clair, I think. They've been really showing this in, entire game that they really have a strong defensive mindset. Um, and once they have those those choke holds, uh, they're, they're hard to stop. Yeah, I think sort of the story of the, the first point really was the maze, right? Because yeah. it felt like the Magician had a really fantastic wall on that first point. And then it felt like the maze weren't really that useful after that first point. So um, I think St. Clair swapped off of that maybe really fast after that first one got capped, but uh, the Ducks sort of held on to it for a little while longer. Maybe we might see a lack of May, perhaps, on this uh, a little bit earlier from the Ducks as a point of success, but who yeah. knows? Yeah, May works really well at this first choke point, trying to wall off and walking in and taking him out, but um, I think St. Clair knows that strategy well and might be able to take advantage of that, so. Um, I would expect uh, Magician to switch off the bay pretty fast if it didn't go their way. Um, really one of those characters that you know, changed the entire tide of the game, but you know, it just depends how you play it. I'm excited to see what Oregon has in the plan for St. Clair opting to pull the dunk instead of the off the offense. Yeah, it works really well for them if it's on the that up really fast. St. Clair forced back with tire. Gonna come off prime. Got a good flank position. High dude now available.
really looks unstoppable on these first punches. So it's gonna come down to this third point here. Buck's likely gonna be able to contest this one. Though. Yeah, I think One, 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 zero. Yeah, there we go. A big window gonna come out from Eitrel as well. The beat for St. Clair. Not gonna be quite enough to keep Sweet alive and with no tank. Oh, but Amber finds a nice tire and climb the pick on Eitrel. It's actually not gonna go the Ducks way despite the nice kill. Yukimuku dies with chatter up as well. Um, yeah, Oregon had the It's not looking good for the dog sweet find you prime the pick on the magician and now it's really just got a hope that these close spots are gonna keep you alive the, the cart and around to the corner and the ducks four minutes to hold in these last ten meters. Oregon really needs to work it's not only Yeah, that's it. This is it. Yeah, and, and really a, a dominant 2-0 win. It felt like the only close point on this entire series really was that first Antarctic Peninsula, right? Where it was, it was what, 97, 100. And then St. Clair just sort of rolled it back to back, 100 to zero. It didn't, it didn't even look like they were phased in the King's Row game at all. So with that, the uh, Ducks varsity going to fall to 2-1. and one, And St. Clair presumably going to push themselves up to three and zero and now we will have another game in you know 20 minutes or whatever at yep. noon uh, where the ducks will be taking on the dpu i think yeah yeah i think so <laughs> I <don't laughs> something I don't like that yeah we'll, we'll 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 let you know when we get that info mm -hmm. uh but yeah really really rock showing thank claire and and really rough showing from from oregon uh i think what they really need to work on is their communication um, using ults together um, and uh, knowing where the other teammate is, you know, especially even in that first Antarctic Peninsula ma uh, map, where they won that first round, they were still getting easily split up by the Wrecking Ball. Then as soon as the Rhine switch, it was like it was like that. Like St. Clair just had it in the bag um, and didn't even look back. So um, Oregon definitely has a lot to think about. Might even see some substitutions during the next one. Obviously, likable orb on the bench. Um, and I troll uh, playing the support role. So uh, interesting to see what the what what the next matchup will look like. Because uh, Oregon not happy with themselves. I can assure you that with that matchup, they came out looking strong and did not finish that way. Yeah, exactly. And before we throw it to a quick break before the next match starts, can you can you break down? We saw exclusively the Lucio plus the Baptiste yes. in the sports. Can you explain that for me and maybe our other uh, less connoisseurs of overwatch yeah uh one of my favorite support combos i love both those characters very dearly uh baptiste able to put out so much da uh healing um as well as damage if you get those headshots uh he is a hit scan character um but really what is important about baptiste is his ability mm -hmm. immortality field is probably the best uh, uh basic uh, ability yeah ability in the game i mean aren't able to be eliminated while you're in that field and it can counter so many ultimates, counter so many characters. Um, it's just so useful. Um, and also just the AOE healing as well. Um, Lucio's speed boost is extremely effective because they're also playing Reinhardt. And when you get the speed boost in with the Reinhardt as well. Um, also Lucio, a lot of people don't know how Lucio uses speed boost to bring characters back. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone's over taxi service. Yeah, if someone's overextending, Lucio's able to, it's, it's more useful sometimes speed boost their your tank back to your other support than it is to heal boost hmm. um lucio also can be extremely disruptive and also is really good against flanking 
Um, and that's just a really two, – those two together work really well. Um, we also see a lot of Lucio Kiriko. Um, and so, yeah, I, I love seeing Lucio, uh, one of my favorite characters for sure. Um, but those two work really well together. The one problem, though, is like, like I said before – Lucio can't do that much healing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he has the he has the AOE healing. He can pump out healing over time. But if your tank's getting shot at by five characters, Lucio's not keeping them alive. So one of the most important things for a Lucio to do is make sure your support's okay, making sure your whole team's in position, because really they're going to be the do one doing them. So are we, like, only going to see Lucio back today? Or is there is there, like, a chance we're going to see something else? Yeah, I mean, we saw a little Kiriko at the beginning, um, especially with Ryan. Like, that 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 cleanse is also one of those top abilities, I think, in the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we haven't seen a lot of Mercy lately, which is interesting because a lot of people are liking Mercy right now. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I would expect to see a lot of Lucio Kiriko. Uh, so uh, Lucio's Kiriko. really good. We're, we're going to see Lucio today. We're going to see a lot of Lucio. Okay. We're probably going to see a lot of Bap, and we're probably going to see a lot of Kiriko. Those are the three supports I think we're probably going to see. All right, well, we can look forward to that in just a bit here. We're going to go for a quick break while we wait for the next lobby to get started up. But we'll be back 15, 20 minutes to keep your Saturday morning going nice. So stick around, don't go anywhere, and we'll be back once that game is ready.
Welcome back, everybody. We got we round back. four. Yeah, back better than ever, you could even say. Um, and we are up against DePaul Varsity, mm -hmm. um, despite what they may, you know, say on their links. They are DePaul. Yes, um, they are. And, yeah, they DePaul also lost the previous round to Cal Esports, I believe. Yes. Uh, so now it's both these teams, both teams sitting at two and one. Uh, of the, I, I believe this this bracket's like so it's ten rounds. Mm -hmm. Top sixty four teams after ten rounds make it to the the bracket stage. Then it's eight groups of eight round robin. Top two in each group go to the final sixteen double elim bracket. So first first stage of the like two hundred eighty nine teams in the league, right? You have to basically have a record of seven and three or better. You're guaranteed top sixty four. Yeah. Some six and fours are gonna make it as well. That's that's probably what that's probably what you need to know for this. Um, but either way, starting on Li Zhang Tower. Li Zhang Tower, a classic, an absolute classic, here. Uh, and we're gonna be starting out there. Uh, interested to see what's gonna happen here. We got um, some swaps. Yeah, we got some interesting uh, comp coming out of DePaul. Um, if they do switch it. These are characters we have not seen today, uh, especially with the Farah. And Farah has not been getting a lot of play lately because of how strong hit scans are. Um, obviously, Soldier 76 getting the buff, Cassidy getting the buff, um, especially with a lot of people playing Baptiste. So, interested to see how that will work out for Safin. Um, as UO Esports sticking with that composition from their last match, the Hunter on the Cassidy and Itrol is now back on DPS as THL back in the lineup for support. Yeah, and like you mentioned, you know, all that Immediately, talk. Immediately, oh, yeah. That, that, that's that, why we don't play Farah. We're going to see Z uh, Zeph with the with the res on the Farah, though. Um, as uh, U of O just trying to back up into the point, take the advantage. Um, Safin just trying to fly out on the outside. And, yeah, this Farah swap might be fast if this doesn't work <laughs> out well for DePaul here. As U of O going to take the first cap. Yeah, and we're seeing Kiriko Mercy, like you mentioned, Mercy, Farah, classic combination, obviously. Putter, a nice grenade on Safin, taken out a second time. And I, I have to imagine that we're swapping off this far, right? Yeah, the Farah and Mercy both uh, struggle against these hit scan type teams. Um, and uh, especially with Putter being such a strong DPS main, as uh, so we're going to see Safin switch on to the uh, Sojourn here. Um, ball on the uh, Diva pick, which is interesting. Wow, and Zen. Switching actually to Ball. Like I was going to say, Diva not too great after that nerf to her damage output. Um, so we are going to see the swap. Oh, ball actually going back to Doomfist. Okay. We're going to get the Doomfist pick here. Um, really unorthodox, some, some of these picks from DePaul. Um, just trying to switch it up, see what works here. Is Oregon going to try and hold this point at this attack? 45% of the way there. The Ducks, they have the high noon available to them. Ball going for a nice flank here. Wow. Doomfist, huh? Yeah, a real interesting pick. Uh, I'm not sure why. I'm interested to know why this is the pick for them. But, uh, yeah, I mean, really separated from the rest of their team. And Doomfist going from DPS to tank has made a lot of his uh, flanking abilities uh, not as strong. So interested to see why he's doing that. As we're going to see the Deadeye come out. Doomfist charging in, stunning Hunters to cancel out the ultimate here as, as uh, really DePaul just trying to get some sort of pick in the back line, especially the Tracer, but Hunter going to be able to take him out. You know, that magnetic grenade so effective against the Tracer. Oh, great wall. Yeah, and, and Oregon just kind of steamrolling here as they're just trying to take out Ball, who's just trying to charge up more ult, I think. You ever think about how they just gave Cassidy like a, a Pulsar Trace Bomb, but on like a 15 second cooldown yeah honestly i know people don't like it but i i still don't like stunning so uh you think it's fine yeah i think i think right now it might be tough because of how how useful cassidy is so. all right well 99 percent. someone's got a touch and it's gonna be the doomfist first and foremost the window the goes down the blizzard is popped we got all the ultimates available to work with pukumuku a nice double flame strike and it's gonna be a, a closed door Maybe with a bit of a shove to at the yeah. end there because that was not close. Easy picking for for U of O Esports is they're going to take the hundred O cap on this first round on the first map, starting off strong and and uh, you know there's a lot of differences I'm seeing from the last matchup. Uh, you know communication is definitely up I think um, as well as ultimate usage they really could save it all to the end because they were getting those picks so well especially uh, from putter as we're going to see the. Maybe a Genji play, which I, I would love to see, but um, on the, the Ducks second didn't, map. They didn't swap their comp up at all from that first game. Yeah, it went really well for them, um, and 
I think one of the disadvantages is we saw so many switches from DePaul, so they weren't able to charge up their ultimates. Obviously, with this last update in Season 3, uh, ultimate charge from a swap player is now down to only 25%. Wow. Um, so you're not able to keep as much of that ult charge when you need to switch. Well, Putter, we're, it's the Symmetra game now because both teams locked in that Symmetra and Putter is charging that beam up all the way. Munch it away at that Reinhardt shield. It's going to be a, a clean kill. Flatline Pukamuku find the first two pick for the Ducks. And with a two-man advantage, they're just going to turn that Lucio speed up and run it right down as four members for DePaul are going to die. Absolutely really strong showing from Putter and Itrol, that really strong duo there. I'm interested there. I think the the Reaper pick is they're in, it's in close quarters, so Reaper can be effective. But when you're just mowing down that much damage, Reaper, when he can't get up close, uh, really not able to do much uh, except try and flank around. So Oregon going to set up right here at this spawn door as DePaul gonna maybe try and go around. Oh, as, nice wall. Yeah, strong wall here as uh, Flatline just trying to put in damage, take him out. Um, oh, big shatter, gonna find a couple as well. And the Ducks are, and the rolls, I'm getting deja vu here. Yeah, this is, oh my, this is like one of the comp games you get yeah. randomly and you get a good one. And Flatline just, we're just going to be looking for a no, poop No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. This is just... Uh, all right, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here, Pat, Flatline. Get out of here. It's it's disrespectful at that point, but um, uh, Oregon really I just trying to hold off here. 1v5 in the enemy team, um, so that's interesting. Yeah. You see the sim wall come up. Putter going to find a clean kill as well. And even with the, the, the man down, the Ducks are going to clean this one up. No sweat at all. Yeah, Li Zhang can really be a map that is totally defined by how the flow is going, how they're paced. And so once you really have a strong um, defense set up, it's really hard to break sometimes, especially on uh, lunar uh, the, the lunar base. Is that this one? Yeah, I'm I don't, my, I don't my, remember what it's called. My low elo is showing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or really my lack of game experience. I, I sometimes forget the specific names for the, the maps, but... Uh, com control center, I think, actually, is what it's called. Okay, yes. that makes control more sense. Control center or command center. Um, I should roll swap to the Widow. Want to have some fun? <laughs> yeah, oh, I, we're going to spawn I think camp this map. I, I just trying to keep them back in the back line as the rest of the team fights. Uh, we are going to see the Death oh, Blossom. Oh, all right, going to find one. Hunters down, THL's down, so is Flyland Pikamuku down as well as I troll just trying to take him off in the back line <laughs> and I think Oregon got a little too confident here a little too big um, for their bridges yeah you know just trying to have fun I think but uh DePaul can really you know it's a game of flows it's it's a game of runs and so if DePaul can have a strong showing here th that could be a complete uh shatter uh, available a complete turnaround from how the start of this one we're gonna see some ults going up uh, from the side of DePaul, we're going to see the Shatter coming oh. over from Yukimuko. Huge Shatter as Oregon able to just wipe him out. And Zephyr's down. That's a team kill for Oregon. And so maybe that overconfidence I, paid off in the end. call that a fight? That was, I mean... He just brought the hammer down, and they all died. That was a slaughter. That was, they they, they, they have, hit a pinata. Pukamuku, they have families. How can you do that to them? <laughs> um, think yeah, about the children. Think about the children as we're going to see the Bastion swap for Safin as they're just desperate to try and get on this point. But and, then this looks impossible I to walk through. I think at, at this wall. point, we can call this map for Oregon Esports as really just finishing them off as – the combination of Pukamuku and Putter just putting out too much damage. I think that was a speed run. They, they 100 to 0 at first point. Absolutely. Basically uh, 100 to 0 at second point. Really strong showing from Oregon, especially after that last game. Uh, and Pukamuku really showing off his stuff. is Just able to just go in there, put out a ton of damage. Um, and really smart with the charge cancels, the, oh, the shatter placement, I mean, the dump. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't do a play better myself. I, I definitely couldn't. Unless I was close. playing Winston. I love Winston. How much of that do you think was THL coming in, replacing Itrol on the support, moving Itrol over to the DPS, letting Magician take a breather? You know, how much, you know, do you think it was just maybe the matchup, the comps, or do you think it was the players? What, what are the, it was all of them? <laughs> yeah, a lot of different things. You know, I think Itrol is more, more, more uh, confident um, on the DPS. THL coming in. I love watching THL. I think one of the most underappreciated members of the team. The support don't get as much love as they, they deserve for sure. Um, shout out just, my support players. Yeah, shout out my support players. You're the best, and uh, you deserve better. 
Um, but anyway, <laughs> really strong showing. I think there was a lot of things. Yeah, moving Eitrell to DPS. Um, Putter just was putting in the damage of Symmetra. Um, Pukamuku just able to win when Pukamuku is getting those heals and the spacing that that they need. Um, really able to steamroll the team. And and Reinhardt's one of those characters that when played well and has a good combination is so hard to beat and can deal so much damage and has so much utility. Um, so really strong showing from U of O. Uh, also ultimates, uh, com combining ultimates, we see the Blizzard and then the Earth Shatter, able to pick off that. Um, just a lot of really strong things from U of O. I have news. Yes. I have news. Um, DePaul would like to FF. <laughs> they are they are unwilling to play. Uh, they Whoa. they they played the first map and they're like, yeah, that's good for me. That, you guys are better. That is insane. This is the first time in my entire <laughs> streaming career that I have ever seen a team forfeit that fast. Hey, go next. And they are back. They to gotta playing. get back to their comp. They games. gotta get back to their comp. They gotta games. get back to their comp games. Um, you know, right? They gotta get their gold guns for uh yeah, for yeah, those yeah. games. But yeah. wow, what that's a, brutal. What a showing for Oregon. What a morale boost, I think, yeah. after such a tough game to go in against another team and absolutely steamroll to the point that they don't even want to try play a second map. They are like, you guys are way too good for us. Um, so, wow, what a showing from U of O Esports right there. That's, that's, that's the first time that I've ever seen that. I think this yeah. is the first time for our entire department here um, at the University of Oregon. Uh, yeah, they want to go back to their comp They want to go back to their comp. Um, I mean, all right, well uh, – GG's, thanks for playing to Paul. Unfortunate that it it didn't go your way this time, but the Ducks UO Green Varsity team is going to advance to three and one in this tournament. So more of this will be coming next week, same time, 11 p.m. PST, 12 p.m. PST should be streamed as well. That will be rounds five and six. Uh, JV team they also started the day two and zero. Oh. I'm yes. not sure how they are doing now since we can't actively check, but. Uh, hopefully they also were doing pretty well. Aiden, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on campus at the University of Oregon. Okay. No, you can find me uh, <laughs> on Instagram, Aiden Kent. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Aiden K underscore zero. Uh, you can find me in your Overwatch lobbies at Xarcana. Um, but, yeah, and you can find me here at the University of Oregon Esports Twitch channel. Um, yes, I'm sir. I'm out here for a blast. I love me some Overwatch. And, man, what a great day. What a treat. Yeah. Retreat. I can get out of here early. I got a league match to watch later. Speaking of league matches later, University of Oregon varsity team, 6 p.m. tonight versus Stanford. We are going to beat them. Yeah. Um, Stanford, they, they're they known for being smart, but we are the smarter. Couldn't have said it any better myself. <laughs> Thank you, Aiden. I hope everybody watching had a great weekend start with us, and we hope to catch you once again later tonight for some League of Legends or perhaps – later next week for some more overwatch Absolutely. thank you very much for tuning in thank you very much to nathan our wonderful producer over there making sure everything runs as beautifully as possible if you want to go join our community play with our teams play in our in-houses join our events you can find us at discord.gg slash uo esports or on twitter at uo esports thank you very much once again and we hope you have a wonderful day good night